On January 28, 1986, the U.S. Space Shuttle Challenger took off right on schedule, only to explode 74 seconds later, killing all seven crew members on board in front of a horrified live television audience. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. We have main engine start. 4, 3, 2, 1, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. Good roll program confirmed. Challenger now heading down range. Engines beginning throttling down now at 94 percent. Normal throttles uh, for most of the flight 104 percent. We'll throttle down to 65 uh, percent shortly. Engines at 65 percent. Three engines uh, running normally. Three good fuel cells. Three good APUs. Velocity 2,257 feet per second. Altitude 4.3 nautical miles. Downrange distance 3 nautical miles. Engines throttling up. Three engines now at 104 percent. Challenger, go and throttle up. Challenger, go and throttle up. Seconds. Velocity 2,900 feet per second. Altitude 9 nautical miles. Downrange distance 7 nautical miles. Flight controllers here looking very carefully at the situation. Obviously a major malfunction. We have no downlink. Digging deeper, we find Challenger having made nine previous successful flights and having traveled over 25 million miles in its career prior to the tragedy. The crew, who had planned to study Halley's Comet as part of their mission, also included a civilian, Mrs. Sharon Krista McAuliffe. Mrs. McAuliffe, who was from New Hampshire, had won a contest to become the first ordinary citizen in space. The high school teacher became an instant celebrity as news of her participation spread all over the world. She even intended to give a few science lessons from space. The Challenger, on its 10th mission, lifted off at about 11 in the morning, traveling at about twice the speed of sound, less than two minutes into its flight, an O-ring on one of the main rocket engines failed, causing fuel to leak, which then led to a fire and then to the explosion. Lift off confirmed. Lift off. Houston Challenger, roll program. Roger, roll, Challenger. Good roll, flight. Raj, good roll. Three at 65. 65, Fido. TDL confirms throttle. Thank you. Challenger, go with throttle up. Challenger, go with throttle up. Fido, trajectory. Go ahead. Flight GC, we've had uh, negative contact, we lost the downlink. Okay, all operators, watch your data carefully. Flight final until we get stuff back. He's on his cue card for abort modes. Flight GC, negative downlink. Copy. Flight Fido. Go ahead. RSO reports vehicle exploded. Copy. Fido, can we get any reports from recovery forces? Stand by.
Final flight. Go ahead. Do the RSOs have an impact point? Stand by. Okay, everybody, stay off the telephones. Make sure you maintain all your data. Start pulling it together. Fight or flight. Go ahead, sir. Are the LSOs on the loop? We can get them. Get them up on this loop, please. On your own. Yes, sir, it's the LSO. Okay, are there any forces headed out that way? Yes, sir. DOD LSO reports that all, all SOC forces have been... The weather in Florida had been unusually cold, and engineers recommended the flight be postponed. But impatient officials of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, insisted on launching anyway, and the cold is believed to have been the cause for the O-ring failure. Fortunately, all seven crew members died in the explosion and crash. It was initially reported that the crew was killed immediately in the enormous explosion, but later it was determined that the cabin of the shuttle did not explode, but instead detached from the rest of the orbiter, and it was surmised that the crew probably died upon impact with the Atlantic Ocean. America was devastated by the first fatal in-flight space accident, especially the many school-aged children who were following the takeoff on TV to see the Challenger carry a teacher, McAuliffe, into space. President Ronald Reagan announced a week of mourning as a sign of respect for the crew who lost their lives for the country. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd planned to speak to you tonight to report on the State of the Union. But the events of earlier today have led me to change those plans. Today is a day for mourning and remembering. Nancy and I are pained to the core by the tragedy of the shuttle Challenger. We know we share this pain with all of the people of our country. This is truly a national loss. Nineteen years ago, almost to the day, we lost three astronauts in a terrible accident on the ground. But we've never lost an astronaut in flight. We've never had a tragedy like this. And perhaps we've forgotten the courage it took for the crew of the shuttle. But they, the Challenger 7, were aware of the dangers and overcame them and did their jobs brilliantly. We mourn seven heroes, Michael Smith, Dick Scobie, Judith Resnick, Ronald McNair, Ellison Onizuka, Gregory Jarvis, and Krista Mikoloff. We mourn their loss as a nation together. To the families of the seven, we cannot bear, as you do, the full impact of this tragedy. But we feel the loss, and we're thinking about you so very much. Your loved ones were daring and brave, and they had that special grace that special spirit that says, give me a challenge and I'll meet it with joy. They had a hunger to explore the universe and discover its truths. They wished to serve and they did. They served all of us. We've grown used to wonders in this century. It's hard to dazzle us. But for 25 years, the United States space program has been doing just that. We've grown used to the idea of space and perhaps we forget that we've only just begun. We're still pioneers. They, the members of the Challenger crew, were pioneers. And I want to say something to the school children of America who were watching the live coverage of the shuttle's takeoff. I know it's hard to understand, but sometimes painful things like this happen. It's all part of the process of exploration and discovery. It's all part of taking a chance and expanding man's horizons. The future doesn't belong to the faint-hearted. It belongs to the brave. The Challenger crew was pulling us into the future, and we'll continue to follow them. I've always had great faith in and respect for our space program, and what happened today does nothing to diminish it. We don't hide our space program. We don't keep secrets and cover things up. We do it all up front and in public. That's the way freedom is, and we wouldn't change it for a minute. We'll continue our quest in space, there would be more shuttle flights and more shuttle crews, and yes, more volunteers, more civilians, more teachers in space. Nothing ends here. Our hopes and our journeys continue. 
I want to add that I wish I could talk to every man and woman who works for NASA or who worked on this mission and tell them your dedication and professionalism have moved and impressed us for decades and we know of your anguish. We share it. There's a coincidence today. On this day, 390 years ago, the great explorer Sir Francis Drake died aboard ship off the coast of Panama. In his lifetime, the great frontiers were the oceans, and a historian later said he lived by the sea, died on it, and was buried in it. Well, today, we can say of the Challenger crew, their dedication was, like Drake's, complete. The crew of the Space Shuttle Challenger honored us for the manner in which they lived their lives. We will never forget them, nor the last time we saw them this morning as they prepared for their journey and waved goodbye and slipped the surly bonds of Earth to touch the face of God. Thank you. NASA also postponed further space shuttle flights indefinitely. Investigations into the disaster produce conflicting results. Investigators also reveal that the engineers of the booster rockets had advised against launching the shuttle that morning as the below freezing temperatures at Cape Canaveral were likely to damage the rockets. This disaster caused an interruption in space shuttle flights of over two years while NASA studied the accident and took measures to ensure there would not be another O-ring failure. Unfortunately, Space Shuttle Columbia disintegrated on re-entry in 2003 as a result of having lost heat protective tiles at takeoff. That might be uh, some plasma now. Think so, Eddie? Uh, the astronaut firing right now. Uh, it was quite a bit, actually. Yeah, we see it out the front also. There's some plasma. I mean, there's good stuff out front. I'm filming overhead right now. Uh, it's kind of dull. Oh, it'll be obvious when the time comes. Well, really, I guess I could give you the camera to put out the front window. Here, let's, uh, no, let's don't do that. Okay. okay. Let's just, uh, let's go ahead and make sure you check your suit pressure integrity, too. All right. Check on it to come with the uh, visors down. CDR. DLT. Yes, one. MS one. I don't have my gloves on, yes. But oh, MS two. Alright, good enough. So we're gonna leave visors down now. Oh, no. Oh, I'm no, just no, saying, no. just check your seat. That's okay. And sure. sure. I'm gonna go back off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely don't want to be outside now. Like we did before. 
Oddly enough, Space Shuttle Challenger was named after a British ship, a corvette that led a scientific mission from 1872 to 1876 to study marine topics. It was called the Challenger Expedition. All remaining space shuttles are retired now, and NASA is currently without a manned spacecraft. As a question for my students, do you have any desire to travel in a spacecraft? If so, to where? If you like this video and would like to receive notification of new videos, please feel welcome to subscribe to History and Headlines. Your viewership is much appreciated. Mm -hmm.